Hello students and welcome back to our class. Before we proceed with our last video, our last discussion for this chapter, I just want to say that today is October 5 and it's Teacher's Day. So, thank you sa lahat ng mga magigiting na guro na naging daan kung nasan tayo ngayon. In our last videos, we've discussed Lesson 1 and Lesson 2, as well as the first three parts of Lesson 3. So, for today's video, we will discuss the last part of Lesson 3, Theories of Personality. Aside from that, we will also discuss your activity or your Chapter 1 assessment. In this video, we will focus on the fourth theory of personality, which is trait perspective. Ano ba yung meron sa trait perspective? The trait perspective of personality is centered on identifying, describing, and measuring specific traits that make up human personality. So dito, yung target natin is to identify, describe, and measure ano ba yung mga traits that make up a personality. Bakit kailangan natin intindihin yung personality? Bakit kailangan natin intindihin yung mga traits that make up a personality? By understanding these traits, we believe that we can better comprehend the differences between individuals. Mas maintindihan natin yung mga pagkakaiba natin. Pero kayo bilang uh, nasa hospitality industry, bakit importante na maintindihan nyo ito? Importante na maintindihan nyo yung trait perspective at yung differences sa personality kasi you will be um, talking, you will be uh, engaging with other people and you have to recognize na lahat tayo ay magkakaiba. Probably yung bagay na ginagawa natin to one client is okay pero to another it's not okay. So we have to recognize that we are different, we have different responses, we react differently. Under the trade perspective, we will discuss three, actually four psychologists. Later, you will find out bakit naging apat. Pero yung una natin yung discuss is Gordon Allport. Okay? He is an American psychologist at siya din ang unang psychologist na nag-focus sa study ng personality. He believed that People who are aware of and ashamed of their prejudices are well on the road to eliminating them. Parang weaknesses lang din yan eh, di ba? When we recognize our weaknesses, when we recognize our prejudices, our prejudice, we can eliminate them. Kasi the first step in eliminating our weaknesses is to actually recognize them. Si Gordon, o di ba? Si paring Gordon, he is actually the first to categorize these characteristics or traits, or personality traits. Ang ginawa niya, nag-create siya ng list of more than 4,000 personality traits. Imagine, 4,000 personality traits. And then after that, kinategorize na to into three different categories. The three different categories of traits, according to Gordon Allport, are cardinal traits, central traits, and secondary characteristics. In this video, we will discuss them isa isa. Our first category is cardinal traits. Cardinal traits are dominant traits that are expressed across situations and various parts of a person's life. This type of trait is considered rare. Okay? So, bakit? Ano yung common example nito? Common example under cardinal traits are Mother Teresa and Hitler. Ano yung meron? Across the life of Mother Teresa, she was considered and described as caring or altruistic. Mapag-alaga, mabait na tao. And yun yung description sa kanya throughout her life. And the same thing is a flip ball to Hitler. Only this time, he is described as hateful. So, ano yung meron sa cardinal traits? Ito yung traits na dala natin all throughout our life. 
hindi lahat meron ito. Hindi lahat may cardinal traits. This is rare. Yung second category natin is what we call central traits. Ano yung central traits? Central traits are core traits that tend to remain relatively stable throughout life. Many traits uh, or many trait theories of personality focus on central traits, okay? And these are considered as building blocks of personality. And when we say building blocks, ibig sabihin, hindi lang isa. Marami, at, at least more than one, di ba? So, ang sabi nila, uh, in a person's personality, Usually, we have 5 to 10 central traits. Ano yung mga example of central traits? Hardworking, creative, caring, dedicated, funny. Yun yung ilan sa mga example of central traits. Yung last category natin is what we call secondary characteristics. Ano yung meron sa secondary characteristics? These are traits that only present themselves in certain situations. Okay? Hindi to lagi, hindi to everyday characteristics natin. Hindi to everyday personality natin. Okay? This can be inconsistent and may not remain stable over time. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin natin with secondary characteristics? Halimbawa nito ay merong isang tao, halimbawa si Byron, Okay, relatively, kalmado siyang tao. Okay, pero pag dumating na yung uh, a lot of pressure, o kaya andyan na yung maraming module, nagiging irritated siya. Okay, nasisigawan niya yung kapatid niya, o kaya natataranta siya. So, ano yung meron? With secondary characteristics, hindi ito yung everyday characteristics natin. Usually, lumalabas lang siya under certain circumstances, under certain um, situations. I-review natin yung tatlong characteristics. So, meron tayong cardinal traits, central traits, and secondary characteristics. Sa so, cardinal traits, isang trait lang. Okay? It's very dominant na isang trait lang yung nagde-describe ng buong personality ng isang tao. On the other hand, we have central traits. Ito yung building blocks. Ibig sabihin, more than one. Most of the time, it's five to ten traits na bumubuo ng personality natin. And lastly, we have secondary characteristics kung saan ito yung personality natin or yung traits na lumalabas under certain situations lang. Hindi ito yung everyday traits na meron tayo, pero ito yung mga traits na lumalabas under certain or new situations. Our second psychologist is the German-born psychologist with wide-ranging research interest. He is Hans Einsenck. Take two. Hans Einsenck. <laughs> Medyo tongue twister yung name niya. Okay. Pero nandiyan naman yung spelling. Anyway, he is best known for his theory of personality and intelligence, primarily interested in what is usually called temperament. Ano yung temperament? Sabi dito, temperament is an aspect of personality concerned with emotional dispositions and reactions and their speed and intensity. The term often is used to refer to the prevailing mood or mood pattern of a person. So, how do you react to certain situations? Ano yung emotional disposition mo? Ano yung mood mo or mood pattern mo? Ito yung concern ng temperament. So, I have here the temperament infographics. Okay. Hindi tayo masyado mag-focus dito, pero I just want to inform you. Okay. We have four temperament. We have sanguine, choleric, phlegmatic, and melancholic. So, nakadepende siya kung paano tayo nagre-react to certain situation. Are you an extrovert? Kung extrovert ka, rational ka ba or emotional? Kung extrovert ka at rational ka, you're a sanguine. Okay? Ngayon, kung extrovert ka pero emotional ka, you're a choleric. On the other hand, we have introvert. Kung introvert ka at rational ka, we call it phlegmatic. 
And lastly, kung, mer- kung introvert ka and then you are emotional, we call it melancholic. So si Hans, huwag na natin sabihin ng apelido, basta si Hans, okay, he found two main dimension of temperament. These are neuroticism and extroversion introversion. Later on, ma'am, bakit po tatlo yung nakalagay dyan? Kasi later on, he added the third one. And he called it psychoticism. Yung unang dimension ni Hans, ng temperament is what we call neuroticism. Ano yung meron sa neuroticism? It's the dimension that ranges from normal, fairly calm, and collected people to the ones that tend to be quite nervous. Or yung tatawag natin minsan na praning or paranoid. Ano yung meron? During emergencies, magkakaiba tayo ng responses. We have different ways on how we respond to certain situations, specifically emergencies. May mga tao na kalmado. Kala mo parang walang emergency. Diba? Limbawa, lindol, pero takahiga pa rin, tulog pa rin, nagstay pa rin sa kwarto. I know people, okay? I remember so many people. Okay? Meron naman na parang, okay, may lindol, I know what to do. Uh, may response, pero relatively kalmado naman. Pero on the other end of the spectrum, meron naman tayong mga tao na as in very terrified even by minor incidents. Siguro dito, we can consider din yung lola ko. Binis ko yung lola ko. No? Yung lola ko, I remember, kinukwento ka sa akin ni daddy once na when I was young, takot na takot ako sa ulan. Bakit? Kasi yung lola ko, kada umuulan, sobrang, sobrang aligaga niya. Dapat gawin yung ganto, dapat gawin yung ganyan, yung bintana, kailangan taklo ba yung plastic na I, I don't remember ko ano yung tawag doon. Pero you see my point. Okay. So may mga tao na relatively calm, kalmado lang in certain situations. May mga tao naman that what we call, minsan we jokingly call praning. Okay. So yun yung meron sa neuroticism. Nervous people o yung mga tao na mataas sa neuroticism scale, they tend to suffer more frequently from a variety of nervous disorder. Itong mga nervous disorder na, na to, tatawag natin neurosis. At dito nang galing actually yung term niya na neuroticism. Okay? Pero linawin natin na hindi porke mataas yung skill mo sa neuroticism, automatic neurotic ka na. That's not the case. Ano yung pinupunta lang dito? Pag mataas ka dun sa neuroticism scale, ibig sabihin, mas prone ka or mas susceptible ka to neurotic problems. Sabi dito, the most archetypal neurotic symptom is panic attack. Ano yung panic attack? Ito yung uh, instances kung kailan, limawa, meron kang experience na emergency or something na hindi mo nagustuhan nararamdaman mo yung parang nahirapan kang huminga, pinagpapawisan ka, hindi ka makatulog, hindi ka mapakali. So, isa sa mga archetypal symptom or neurotic symptom is panic attack. So, if you experience panic attack um, or you commonly experience panic attack, madalas kang maka-experience ng panic attack, mas mataas yung chances na mataas ka on the neuroticism scale. The second main dimension of temperament is what we call extraversion and introversion. Ano yun? It's a matter of balance between inhibition and excitement in the brain. So, mayroon tayong dalawang concept. We have inhibition and excitement. Ano yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa? When we say excitation, it's about the brain waking itself up and getting into an alert learning state. On the other hand, we have inhibition or the brain calming itself down either in the usual sense of relaxing and going to sleep or in the sense of protecting itself in the case of overwhelming stimulation or situation. Ano yung ibig sabihin noon? Uh, when we say inhibition, ibig sabihin, tinatry pakalmahin ng utak natin, yung sarili natin. How? 
In some cases, when we try to relax, o kaya pag natutulog tayo. Pero, inhibition is also applicable when we experience emergencies. For example, na parang pinapakalma niya yung utak natin, pinoprotektahan niya tayo with, uh, from this situation. Ano yung tinutukoy ko doon? Simulan natin with extrovert. Sabi ni Hans, extroverted person daw has good and strong inhibition. Ano yung nangyayari if you have good and strong inhibition? So halimbawa, pinoprotektahan kasi tayo ng utak natin when we experience traumatic experience. So for example, we, we were in a car crash. Okay, naaksidente tayo. Ano yung gagawin ng utak natin? For extroverted person, uh, the brain inhibits itself. At ano yung nangyayari when the brain inhibits itself? Parang medyo nananumb tayo. At pag nananumb tayo sa trauma, konti lang yung naaalala natin of the traumatic experience. Kung maalala nyo, we can compare this with one of the psychological, perspect, uh, psychological defense mechanism ni Sigmund Freud, yung repression. So, di ba? Nire-repress nung brain natin yung memory, yung traumatic memory. Kaya, nalilimutan natin siya. Napupunta siya sa unconscious thoughts natin. O kaya, very limited lang yung naaalala natin. So, minsan, we will ask the people around us, ano yung nangyari? Parang, na, nabigla na lang ako, ganito na. Okay? At dahil parang nanumb tayo from the experience, from the trauma, ano yung nangyayari? Ibig sabihin, mas madali para sa atin na bumalik ulit. Kasi hindi natin naalala yung trauma eh. Hindi natin naalala yung pain, hindi natin naalala yung pangyayari, yung details ng pangyayari. So kahit galing ka sa car crash or galing ka sa aksidente, mas madali para sa extroverted person na mag-drive ulit a day after. Kasi blanked out yung memory. Blanked out yung trauma. On the other hand, mayroon naman tayong tinatawag na introvert. So, extrovert and introvert. Sa introvert, uh, meron siyang poor or weak inhibition. Kabalik tara ng extrovert. So, Limbawa, yung sa trauma uli or sa car crash uli, during a car crash, sa introvert or introverted person, their brains don't protect them enough or fast enough. So, kasi dun sa extrovert, diba, pinoprotektahan ng brain yung tao from the experience, dito na-experience mo lahat yun or you remember every single detail of the traumatic experience. Kasi you are highly alert, you learn well, and you remember everything that happened. Dahil doon, every single detail, parang kaya mo siyang i-describe in slow motion. Naalala mo siya in slow motion yung nangyari sa'yo. At dahil doon, less likely ka na mag-drive ulit. Or kung magda-drive ka ulit, it will take a while. Kasi you still remember the trauma, you still remember the experience, you remember every, every single detail of the traumatic experience because you are very alert. You are very excited. Yun yung term na ginagamit natin. Kasi nga, you have poor or weak inhibition. That's what we call introvert. Sabi ko nga, initially, meron lang dalawang dimension of temperament na na-identify si Hans. Pero, Parang he recognize na although ang laki na ng population ng study niya, parang meron pang uh, population that he was not tapping. Parang may kulang. And so, therefore, he conducted research, okay, in or studies in the mental institutions of England. After that, napansin niya meron pang another dimension ng temperament. And that's what he called psychotism. Ano yung psychotism? High psychoticism does not mean you are psychotic. Gaya rin sa neuro neuroticism, hindi porke mataas ka doon, ibig sabihin neurotic ka na. Hindi rin porke mataas ka sa psychoticism, ibig sabihin psychotic ka na or automatic magiging psychotic ka. 
Okay? Ibig sabihin lang na to, meron kang mga qualities that you exhibit na usually found among psychotics. Medyo may mga similarities. And you are more susceptible pag nagkaroon ng certain situations or matrigger ka, may chance na mag maging psychotic ka. Ano ba yung mga qualities that we find in people with high psychoticism? Kasama dito yung certain recklessness, disregard for common sense or convention, ano yung nakasanayan na ng society, hindi mo sinusunod, that's some of the qualities na observable sa mga matataas ang psychoticism. Ano pa? Degree of inappropriate emotional expression. May namatay, pero you don't feel any emotional connection. Kahit na parent mo yun. Okay? Yung emotional relationship mo or EQ mo, emotional quotient mo, mababa. These are some of the things na common sa mga tao na mataas ang psychoticism level. It is the dimension that separates those people who end up in institutions from the rest of humanity. But again, tulad ng neuroticism, it doesn't automatically mean na ikaw ay psychotic pag mataas ang psychoticism level mo. Mataas yung chances mo, mataas ang susceptibility mo, and given certain situation, very susceptible ka, pero hindi automatic, you are psychotic. To review, here is a summary from Jake Eaker in 2017. Okay, medyo dinagdagan niya ng isa, pero focus lang tayo dun sa tinaskas natin. So, una, mayroon tayong extroversion and introversion dito sa lisahan niya. So, ano yung pinagkaiba? Extroversion or extrovert people are more outgoing and social and more open to new experience. Bakit? This can be attributed to the fact na their brains protect them from traumatic experience. So, they tend to be more outgoing and social. On the other hand, we have introversion or introvert people, very close to off, less social, less comfortable to talking to new people. And then we have neuroticism. They are very or strongly emotional and shows sign of excessive stress. Sabi nga, di ba? Neurosis. O kaya yung panic attack. And then, skip natin yung emotional stability. Let's focus on the last one, psychoticism. Solitary, not caring for others, and very little emotion. So, that's the summary for uh, Hans Einsek na concept of per or trait personality. Yung third and fourth psychologist natin, o diba sabi ko sa inyo apat, pero under three topics lang. So sila, sina? Robert McRae and Paul Costa. Sinundan nila yung steps ni Hans. Basta si Hans, okay? Sinundan nila yung steps ni Hans at dinagdagan nila to. At yung result ng effort nila is now known as the five-factor model of personality. At ito yung isa sa mga most widely respective perspective on personality structure. Yung five-factor model of personality na McCray at Costa is popularly known as Ocean. Okay, bakit? Kasi kung titignan nyo, meron tayong lima. At ano yung limang yon? Openness, consensusness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. At kung titignan nyo yung mga first letter ng limang to, maubuo mo yung word na ocean. Okay, so para mas madali nating maalala. So yung una is openness. Ano ba yung openness? This is the tendency to think in abstract, complex ways. And this is actually strongly related to a person's interest in art and culture. So, yung mga tao na mataas ang score sa openness, they tend to be creative, adventurous, and intellectual. They enjoy playing with ideas and discovering novel experiments or experiences. 
On the other hand, pag low naman yung score mo sa openness, usually these are people that are practical, conventional, and focused on the concrete. They avoid the unknown and follow traditional ways. Kaya nga openness, di ba? So kung mababa ka noon, you're not really open to ideas. So you follow the traditional way at ayaw mo ng unknown. Ayaw mo sa kanta ni Elsa na into the unknown. Okay? Yun yung pinagkaiba ng mga tao na mataas sa openness. At mababa naman yung score sa openness. Aside from that, yung mga matataas ang score sa openness, they tend to enjoy arts and seek out unusual, complex form of self-expression. So, through painting, sa pagkanta, sa acting, sculpture, yung mga taong matataas sa openness, they uh, they express themselves in other forms, especially the arts. On the other hand, pag low naman, medyo hindi sila fan ng arts. They are suspicious of arts and prefer to focus more on practical pursuits. The second one we have is consensuousness. Okay? It describes a person's ability to exercise self-discipline and control in order to pursue goals. So, ang focus ng consensuousness is actually on the dilemma na lagi natin kinakaharap. Ano yun? Kagawin na ba natin yung what feels good right now? Yung gusto natin gawin? Yung rewarding? Or gust, gagawin ba natin ngayon yung less fun pero will pay off in the future? Ano yung example? Siyempre, example dito yung mag-aaral ka ba ngayon o mag-Facebook ka muna? Siyempre, mas mag-enjoy ka dun sa mag-Facebook ka muna, mag-Twitter, makipag-chat. Pero, what pays off in the future? Siyempre, yung mag-review ka muna. So, ito yung concern ng consensuousness. Some people are more likely to choose fun in the moment. Siyempre, Facebook muna, mamaya na yung review. And thus, yung mga taong ganito, low yung score nila sa consensuousness. On the other hand, meron naman tayong mga tao na nakafocus on certain goals. At dahil focus sila, at may self-discipline sila, gagawin nila yung less fun, pero pays off in the future. Therefore, mataas yung score nila with consensuousness. Ano yung pinagkaiba? Pag mataas yung score mo, you are more likely organized and determined. Okay? Kaya mong i-forgo yung immediate gratification. Kaya mong labanan yung id mo. Yung id na gusto, yung gusto mo ngayon na agad. Okay? For the sake of long-term achievement. On the other hand, pag low naman yung score mo sa consensuousness, you are more likely impulsive and easily sidetracked. Yung tipong mag-video ka dapat ng discussion mo, pero halfway through, titigil ka kasi mag-Facebook ka muna. Diba? Sinong guilty? Okay? Ano pa? More likely to choose fun in the moment. Okay? The third one we have is extraversion. So, mapansin nyo, sabi ko nga, may similarities siya dun sa ginawa ni Hans. Extraversion. Pero may differences yung um, definition nila. Ano yung meron sa extraversion under McRae and Costa? Under this, the ang extraversion uh, focus on the person's inclination to seek stimulation from the outside world, especially in the form of attention from other people. Masaya ka bang makakuha ng attention from the people around you? O mas gusto mo yung mag-isa ka lang? Solitary. You keep to yourself. Mas masaya ka nang nasa kwarto ka lang, nagbabasa ng libro, ganun. Yun yung concern ng extraversion ni Costa at ni Macri. So yung matataas sa ang score sa extraversion, meron ano, getting a promotion or finding a new romance or winning an award are likely to bring joy to an extrovert. Okay? Masaya sila when they are recognized. On the other hand, we have introvert people. They tend to be more content with simple, quiet lives and rarely seek attention from others. 
The fourth one we have is agreeableness. Okay, any agreeableness? It describes a person tendency to put others' need ahead of their own and to cooperate rather than compete with others. Mas gusto mo bang tumulong sa tao o mas gusto mong makipag-compete? Yun yung concern ng agreeableness. Pag mataas yung score mo sa agreeableness, um, you experience a great deal of empathy and tend to get pleasure out of serving and taking care of others. So, if you are in a hospitality industry, ang kailangan talaga dito is that you have high agreeableness, di ba? Sabi pa nila, the customer is always right. Although, hindi naman talaga. Pero, you need to have patience. Okay? And you need to find pleasure in serving other people. Okay? They are usually trusting and forgiving. On the other hand, pag low naman yung score mo sa agreeableness, you experience less empathy at mas concerned ka sa needs mo kesa sa needs ng other people. They are often described as hostile, competitive, and antagonistic. Minsan, mahilig makipag-away, mahilig makipagtalo. Okay, kasi nga, they, uh, they need or they want to focus on their own needs. And the last one is neuroticism. Ano yung meron? It describes a person tendency to experience negative emotions including fear, sadness, anxiety, guilt, and shame. Okay. So lahat tayo, magkakaiba tayo ng na-experience na emotions from time to time. Siyempre, may times na masaya tayo. <coughs> I'm sorry. May times naman na malungkot tayo. Yung trait na neuroticism, ito yung alarm system natin. So, people experience negative emotions as a sign that something is wrong in the world. You may be in danger, so you feel fear. Okay? O kaya you feel guilt. At iba't iba tayo ng way to express that. Kung mataas yung score mo sa neuroticism, more likely to act to a certain situation with fear, anger, sadness, and the like. So, mostly negative feelings. To certain situations, usually negative yung nararamdaman mo. Either malulungkot ka, magagalit ka, magigilt ka. And these are negative emotions. Okay? Sa low naman, sa neuroticism, you're more likely to brush off misfortune and move on. Mabilis, mag-move on. Okay? Hindi ka masyadong nagagalit. Okay? Na naman lang na, okay lang yun. Sige, okay lang. Ganon, yung low in neuroticism. So, to summarize, meron tayong lima. Ocean. Okay? Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Pag mataas ka sa openness, you are curious or interested, independent. Pag mababa, you're practical, conventional, and prefers routine. Yung paulit-ulit lang. Okay? You find comfort in doing things routinely. Next, we have conscientiousness. Hardworking, dependable, and organized yung mga tao na high scorer sa conscientiousness. On the other hand, kung mababa yung score mo, you are more likely impulsive, careless, and disorganized. Third, we have extroversion. Kung mataas yung score mo, you are outgoing, warm, and you want adventure. Okay? Pag low naman, you are quiet, reserved, and withdrawn. You want to be alone. You feel better when you're alone. Okay? Fourth one we have is agreeableness. Pag agreeable ka, mataas yung score mo, you are helpful, trusting, and empathic. Okay? At yung kabila naman nun, on the other end of the spectrum, you are critical, uncooperative, and suspicious pag mababa yung score mo sa agreeableness. Last natin is neuroticism. Pag mataas yung score mo sa neuroticism, you are anxious, 
and happy and you feel negative emotions. On the other hand, pag mababa naman yung score mo, you are calm, even tempered, and secure. That's the end of our discussion for chapter 1. Finally. Okay? Pero meron pa tayong part 4 which is our chapter assessment. So dito, I want you to take an online quiz. Don't worry, hindi to quiz na inisip nyo. But a quiz to find your personality. To find out about your personality. At dito, magfo-focus tayo dun sa big five personality. So, for our chapter 1 assessment, what I want you to do is to take the Big 5 personality test from Truity or Truity.com. That should be Truity. Okay? Truity.com. Okay. It can be accessed from the link and I will provide the link in our description so you can check it. I will also provide the link in our group chat as well as our Google Classroom. Okay? And answer the following questions. First, openness muna tayo. The average score for openness is 58%. Now, syempre, take nyo muna yung quiz, di ba? Bago nyo to sagutan. After taking the quiz, answer this. Ngayon, is your score higher or lower than 58%? Di na kailangan ilagay yung score. Sabihin nyo lang higher or lower. Okay. Then, I, higher, lower. Okay. Next answer, do you agree with your result? Why or why not? Balikan natin. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin? Pag mataas ka from openness at pag mababa ka for openness. Do you agree na nandun ka sa magtaas or mababa? The second one we have is conscientiousness. And the average score for conscientiousness is 55%. Again, did your score higher or lower? And then, do you agree with the result? Why or why not? The third one we have is extroversion. At ang average score for extroversion is 51%. Did you score higher or lower? Are you an extrovert or an introvert? Okay. Do you enjoy... Uh, being with other people or promotion or relationships kung saan people will recognize you or would you rather be alone? Okay? Are you happy in solitary? In solitary? Okay? So, do you agree with your result? Why or why not? Ma'am, sabi dito, ano daw ako? Mas gusto ko daw yung nasa labas kasama yung maraming tao. Pero hindi naman. Eh, things like that. Why? Bakit sa tingin mo, you agree? Bakit din hindi? Bakit you disagree? Fourth one is agreeableness with an average score of 63%. Did, did you score higher or lower? Do you agree with your result? Why or why not? Lastly, we have neuroticism at 54%. Did you score higher or lower? Do you agree with your result? Why or why not? Before you agree or disagree with your result, kindly check again kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng higher, ano yung ibig sabihin ng lower. So, pag tinignan mo, ganito daw yung higher, parang hindi naman ako. Okay, sabi mo, yun talaga ako. Kasi ma'am, ganito po. Okay? Be specific with your answers. Ano? Huwag general answers lang. Sagutin ng specific, pagbigay ng specific details, O kaya, uh, specific experiences na nagpapatunay na ganun ka talaga. Okay? That's the end of our discussion. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Bye class!